Hi everyone and welcome to the fourth in our Mastering Ubiquity six part webinar series. Uh, today we focus on UISP application. Uh, welcome back to those who have joined us for the previous episodes in the series and hello to those who are joining us for the first time today. So um, quickly we'll run through the agenda for today. Uh, firstly I'll introduce the team and for those who are new to these webinars I want to give a brief uh, overview of Foregone and what we do. Um, we'll then start the training. Uh, today's free online training will cover the features and capabilities of the uh, UISP and its advantages when using it for managing complex WISP networks, uh, how to install and activate the software and how to navigate the interface with a live demo of all its functionality and of course go through some of your questions on that if you do have any questions throughout just please put them in the chat box uh, and we'll answer as many of them as we can at the end. I will shortly pass you over to Russell who will be providing today's training. Um, before we start I want to introduce myself uh, and the rest of the team and as I say give a brief overview of Foregone um, to those who I haven't joined us before. My name is Rachel, uh, as you may know from previous episodes. I'm the sales coordinator and account manager here at Foregone. And, and as sales coordinator, I help our sales team in utilizing our established distribution network so that our clients can access the very best in wireless and communication hardware. Um, shortly, I'll pass you over to Russell King. Russell is fully accredited Ubiquity trainer. He's worked, as I say, in IT for over 15 years, uh, 10 of which uh, luckily here with us at Foregone. Uh, he provides all our consultation, support, configuration sessions um, with our customers um, from a wide variety of industries. And quite impressively, he has helped certify almost a thousand Ubiquity engineers. Um, last but not least, I want to introduce Jake. Jake has been working in the Wi Fi and networking industry for almost 10 years, uh, being certified with many different brands, including Ubiquity, and he'll be helping with the Q&As later on. Uh, so for those who haven't joined before, a little bit about us. Forgone is owned by Cadmus Distribution Group and was founded in 2010. CDGL owns and operates a number of established distribution platforms, and this allows us to gain access to the latest industry-leading wireless networking equipment, uh, making it easier for our customers to get hold of the right products and technology when they need it. Uh, but it also allows us to remain competitive and offer exclusive deals uh, and distribute these products globally. And although we have a fantastic relationship with Ubiquity, we are their largest UK distributor. We are truly vendor agnostic and are proud to work with many uh, globally recognized brands, including Teltonica, uh, Robusto uh, and more. However, as I said before in our last webinar, we're not just a distributor of products. We also offer expert in-house tech support packages. Uh, and currently we're the only direct uh, UK distributor for Ubiquity that offers their Ubiquity Training Academy qualification. So um, our accredited trainers have today, as I say, certified over a thousand installers, support technicians and staff, and, and hopefully some of you here today. Um, but I'll go through the course again uh, at the end, just in case any of you who haven't attended wish to book that. Um, and lastly, our distribution channels enable us to offer an industry leading reseller program, uh, which gives project pricing, exclusive deals and invaluable support to these resellers and to those working on those large scale projects. Um, before we start, we do have a quick question for you, if you wouldn't mind answering for us. Um, so Ubiquity point to point and uh, point to multi point solutions cover many key areas and are used across a multitude of industries. If you're able to select from the options below, we would love to hear what industry you're from. So WISP, uh, CCTV security, um, systems integration, home user enthusiast <laughs> or other. Um, so if you could just vote for us quickly. Um, whilst you choose, I just want to confirm that if you have missed any of our uh, previous episodes, they are available to view online. We will send over some links um, on an email by the end of play today. So thanks again for, for voting. Um, we will start the training now. So I will pass you over to Russell, um, where, as I say, he will be doing the, the live demo and go through everything for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth webinar in our Mastering Ubiquity series. I'm Russell King, and for those of you who have attended our previous episodes, and indeed everyone new joining us today, it is very good to have you with us as we introduce you to the UISP management system. 
Before we get into the live exploration of the interface and some of the hardware, uh, or even start introducing the functionality of UISP, it would be great to talk about what UISP serves and how it relates to internet service provision. And the best way to go about this is to explain what an ISP is and break down its key component parts. This should lead you to a better understanding of the UISP interface and how it serves to bring connectivity to its end users, from internet backbone all the way down to customer management, billing and support. Let's start with um, an idea of the traditional internet service provider concept. The, the internet is a web of internet interconnected networks or components, the core of which is very high speed data transmission media. For example, fiber links that can span countries, continents, and even oceans. The nodes, which are usually large data centers at which these data paths terminate, are typically owned and run by national internet service providers or NISPs, who then distribute the connectivity to national and local service providers from data centers. And this is where regional and national ISPs step in who run and own the distribution networks and deliver the internet connectivity to end users. Think BT, Virgin, PlusNet in the UK, uh, that kind of thing. From the ISP's point of view, the distribution network has the following infrastructure, starting at the NISP and ending at the customer premises. In terms of the distribution network, there's several components. There's the internet point of presence, typically located in an internet backbone data center, otherwise known as an internet exchange point or IXP. This is accessed via routers, network switches, multiplexes, and other network interface equipment. It provides high speed, low latency connectivity to the internet. And since all downstream devices and network traffic flow th through this point, it is usually where the ISP has servers for the purposes of customer management and service management. For example, quota billing, link authentication, security, firewall, uh, service suspension. The backhaul distribution network connects the point of presence to the customer service area. It comprises high speed links to the street equipment or concentrators. And you can think of these links between switches to which access points are connected that provide connectivity to multiple clients. The backhaul typically has high speed and low latency connectivity requirements and high availability. For example, failover circuits and multiple routes and transmission media types like wireless and fiber, for example. Then you have the last mile connectivity. This is, for example, a BT cabinet to the home. Individual clients connect to the concentrators located at the end of the backhaul network or at one of its nodes via one or many point to multi point systems. Uh, in the UK, traditionally, these would have been phone lines to uh, customer houses and more recently, modern last mile infrastructure is fiber to the premises and, uh, and cable. The CPE or customer premises equipment, as the name suggests, are the devices situated at the end user's premises that provide connectivity via the last mile systems to the concentrators. Then there's a the service management, authentication, and billing systems. Uh, a lot of the time, the equipment at the POP or point of presence needs to track and monitor the individual connections to customers to ensure SLAs are met. CPs are authorized to use the ISP and to provide billing and customer management services. Due to the uniqueness of the ISP, the customer relationship and customer management systems are usually custom built by the ISP and therefore may be difficult to maintain or add features to, depending on the size of the ISP and how ingrained their existing system is into the technology they use to develop it. So now let's compare this to the Ubiquiti infrastructure. Ubiquiti has several product categories that can serve internet service providers, and the USP management system integrates them all into one simple yet powerful and comprehensive interface. So let's take a look at the infrastructure requirements for ISPs and the Ubiquiti hardware that supports them. Firstly, there's a wired infrastructure. Ubiquiti wireless infrastructure devices can connect the point of presence all the way to the end user. That is to say, Ubiquiti wireless internet service provider hardware does not have to be the entire distribution network, and it doesn't even need to perform any part of it or even a given part of it. So let's discuss the different wired products from Ubiquiti. Core and distribution routing and switching uh, can be provided by the EdgeMax and USP uh, range of products. Wired devices serve the core of the network infrastructure, for example, at the NISP data center and at each node of the distribution network. It typically comprises routers and switches available under the EdgeMax and USP range of products. There's also the last mile concentrators and customer premises equipment. Uh, these uh, can take the form of optical line terminal and um, uh, GPONs or gigabit passive optical network. 
While we often refer to the acronym WISP, or Wired Internet Service Provider, providing connectivity to end users from the concentrators does not have to involve point to multipoint. Optical line terminals, or OLTs, that split via multiplexers uh, provide connectivity via fiber as well. Customers using OLTs can do so via gigabit passive optimal network devices, which would be the CPEs. The OLT and GP on devices are available under the U-Fiber range of Ubiquiti products, such as the UF Loco or the UF Nano, or where traditional multimode or single mode fiber runs to the customer premises, the UFAE converts these to Ethernet for connection to an Ethernet CPE. Let's have a look at wireless infrastructure as well. Long range backhaul, which connects the POP to the distribution mass and concentrators can be made up uh, by air fiber products. Uh, these are you know, low latency, uh, high speed connectivity. There's also GigaBeam, which we covered in the last uh, episode, which provides low range, high speed connectivity for short range backhaul and mass to mass distribution. And then you have AirMax, Wave, and LTU, which provides point to multi point, for example, last mile base stations, as well as customer premises equipment ranging from short range like the Nano Station, medium range like the Nano Beam and Light Beam, and long range using rocket dishes for multi kilometer links. There's also the centralized management. Uh, with wide and wireless elements covered, it should not surprise you at this stage that the ubiquity product ranges I just mentioned can be easily integrated with, managed by, monitored, and configured under UISP, at least for the most part. And ubiquity network management system, or UNMS, was historically used, which now serves just one part of UISP. There's also the customer relationship management system, or UCRM. It's another element of the UISP system which provides end-to-end -end customer management, which is fully customizable and developed this way so that any ISP can set up and use it and customize it. D discussed two episodes ago, the UISP Design Center is also accessible directly from the interface and integrates with it. This allows the UISP users to import their current live infrastructure into the Design Center, allowing them not to only to compare the existing distribution distribution network with a simulated design, but also expand it from the existing nodes within the distribution network, which simplifies scalability. As mentioned before, all EdgeMax, UISP, AirMax, AirFiber, UFiber, Wave, and LTU are supported in UISP. And assuming end-to-end -end connectivity exists, which is layer three or internet connectivity, or in the case of UISP Cloud, USP support devices have the internet connectivity they can integrate into USP using a UISP key, which is like an adoption key. For installation and activation of USP, it's relatively straightforward. For a local instance of USP software, you can install it on Linux. While the installation process takes about 15 minutes, including the installation of the DBN OS, we tried this using VirtualBox. It was literally about 15 minutes. Uh, there is a full guide on this on the Ubiquiti website, which we can share with you after the webinar. Alternative, you can create a USP cloud instance, which is provided for free by Ubiquiti as long as you have an account at UI.com single sign on account. Note that at least 10 devices are required for the cloud instance to remain active past 30 days. Finally, there's a UISP console. This is an appliance which integrates the UISP application and is good for small to medium sized WISP networks. So, I will now showcase a UISP system. In this case, we are using UISP Cloud. I'll be covering a UISP interface walkthrough, a UCRM interface walkthrough, demonstration of device integration, monitoring and configuration. And finally, I'll cover some of the settings, including user firmware and backup. Just to preface before I actually start the, um, the demonstration, we'll be using live equipment and uh, live uh, cloud accounts. So um, you have to bear with me just in case any issues as we go along. So let me get the screen share up. So the USP system has two primary interfaces, network for management of your WISP network and CRM, which provides control over subscribers, customers using your WISP. Let's cover the main network elements first. Right now on screen is the dashboard. This will provide information about your USP network, including the overall health, the gateway device, which serves as the internet in 
entry point and at the point of presence, and if you have one, a network utilization and more. We have the map. The map will provide an interactive map of your network, individual locations housing your devices, i.e. sites can be placed here and you can de assign devices to each site, building up your network topology. You can also access the USP Design Center from here to project your existing and proposed devices. Topology shows your network topology and provides quick view information about device status and easy access to your devices information, settings, management, and statistics pages. Uh, we don't have anything yet, but we'll show that when we get to the uh, actual live demonstration of it. Devices provides a list of your network devices, uh, providing detail, detailed information about each of the devices that you have, and you can subcategorize them as well. Subscribers allows you to add customers to your WISP if required, or locations if you're not a WISP. Uh, if you're just putting a CCTV camera in, for example, at a specific location, you can add a subscriber to represent that. We've created a subscriber already. Speed reports allows your subscribers to conduct speed tests that can be submitted to your UISP console, allowing you to see their test results here. We also have the system log. This provides details about outages, network events, backup power information, and allows you to change push notification settings. The task manager allows you to view tasks you have set within UISP, allowing you to manage and monitor operations. And finally, we have settings. This allows you to change configuration options relating to the UISP, for example, create and manage system users, backups, firmware, and perform maintenance tasks such as UISP updates and downloading support information. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the UCRM interface. Note that we will not be demonstrating UCRM as its interface is so feature rich, we could easily do another website on the topic. So I'll just cover the main part. Uh, points in here. We have the dashboard, which provides information about UCRM status and gives some handy steps for setting it up as if you're new. We have the client list, which uh, uh, lists your subscriber customers and allows you to add customers and provide detailed information, for example, contact, geolocation, billing tax, and customer attributes that your organization may, organization may use. Invoices allows you to provide uh, invoicing support. It provides you an invoicing system so that you can create and track paid and unpaid invoices, submit quotes and credit notes where, where required. And then you have the payment section, which allows you to track payments and refunds against the invoices you have submitted to your customers. Scheduling provides the ability to create jobs for your engineers, finance teams, etc., and assign and track these tasks and add billables to track cost. The CRM also has a fully functional ticketing system for your subscribers and potentially internal staff so that you can track customer issues, complaints, or offer support or information. You can set up your mail system in your local cloud and since you can use this to set, send and receive ticket responses via email. Reports provides the ability to view data usage and billing reports. Uh, some of this information may be useful for setting subscriber limits and managing network upgrades or even over subscription where required. Notifications provides information from various parts of the UCRM, which may be actionable, for example, ticket updates. Where I can't go into detail today, the help section will provide assistance to users on topics relating to UCRM. So if you want to learn more about the UCRM or how to use it, then here's where you need to go. And finally, you have the system section. This allows you to manipulate CRM options, for example, settings and templates, uh, customization, plugins, uh, webhooks, logs, all sorts of information is here. Okay, so let's do a very quick demo of the UISP network. So USP is asking us to add our first device. When you create the uh, USP instance, it will put, give you a fully qualified domain name um, uh, and you'll give your subdomain under usp.com. 
and also give you a UISP key. The UISP key is a, a unique key that you can add to your devices, um, your Ubiquiti hardware, so they can be managed within the USP system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and then I'm going to go into our edge router here, which is part of one of our labs. Uh, we have several devices in the lab. We have an edge OS edge router, which I've done a very basic setup on. An edge switch with a single VLAN trunked on all ports. We have a light APAC, which is an LAP120. This is providing a point to multi point solution. And then we have a light beam, which is our CPE. For the edge router, we need to add it to UISP. Uh, you can't click the UISP uh, button because that'll just take you back to the HMAX dashboard. So I'm going to show you how you can do this via the config tree. Simply go to service, find UNMS, expand it, and it will give you the connection uh, box to put the UISP key into. Give that in, preview, and then apply. So we have to wait a few seconds for this, but I'm going to just give you a bit of a mention on the UISP, um, USP key and the FQDN. If you're running a local instance, you don't need to have a FQDN and it does require SSL, but um, you can use the IP address if you're using a, um, a locally installed instance. So let's go back to our devices list and we can see that we have an edge router now. So what I'll do is I'll go into the edge router and we'll sign it to a site. I've already created a point of presence site, so I'll assign it to that. And then device is online. From here, we can see the device status. Uh, there's a lot of overview information here. For example, the IP address, MAC address, CPU, memory usage, um, and some other bits and pieces as well. You can also look at some statistics, um, although they weren't populated yet because obviously it's a very, very new device on the USP. We can also have a look at interfaces and can even create interfaces. What I will do is create a VLAN interface just as a demonstration. I'll put this against local and just call it uh, CP VLAN. the configuration, we can give it an ID, in this case, VLAN 9. And you can also give it an IP address. So I'll add a static IP, and this will be 192.168.60.1 slash 24, signify the network. Pretty happy with all of that, so we'll just apply those changes. And if I go back into the edge routers interface locally, we should see a new interface in the dashboard. So changes are made in real time. Let's go to the settings. And we'll create a DHCP server from in here for our news network as well. So let's call it the CP DHCP. So it's a CP VLAN. We'll give it a range. And we'll also give it a router IP. And just give it an internet facing DNS. Should be enough. Okay, so now we have our uh, CP, uh, DHCP VLAN and uh, DHCP server. Let's add the next device. If you have a, an edge switch, you can add it via the add to UNMS cloud button. Uh, you do need to have updated NTP cloud setting, uh, client settings on the edge switch for this to work. Uh, last time I tried this doing with the demos, it didn't work very well. So I'm just going to paste the UNMS key for now. But clicking on the UNM add to UNMS cloud will automatically try to add the edge switch 
uh, to the USP logged on in the same um, Chrome browser or browser that you're using. If I go back to devices, yeah, I'll have the edge switch and I'll assign that to a site as well. And that would be the pop. Okay, great stuff. Next, let's add the light AP. So we've already got a link established, but we'll just add it via the UISP. The light AP AC is connected to the edge switch and the edge switch is connected to the router. So uh, we can't create a start or stop USP management without adding the key first. So that's what we'll do. And while that's adopting, we'll have a look at some of the port information and the options you have, for example, PoE, some advanced options like uh, port isolation. You can set up uh, your spam tree protocol here. You can also disable this port, do a cable test and reset uh, port link and PoE power. You also have some global settings for the switch, for example, NTP, system log, um, web UI, and some other bits and pieces as well. Most of the devices you can manage from here, um, the management allows you to change sites for your devices, change your firmware version, complete backups, and some advanced options as well. And then you can obviously do other things, for example, turn on maintenance mode, which will uh, create a maintenance task. So um, the system doesn't give you push notifications all over the place because the um, device is disconnecting. And you can also remove the device from your ISP if you wanted to as well. Let's go back to the devices list. You can see the edge router, the edge switch, and the light AP, and these are all located uh, at the POP, not the point of presence that we've created on our map. So here's our point of presence on the map with the edge router and the edge switch. And what I'll do is I'll look at the topology, and I'll choose the gateway. So this will be the POP, the edge router, and the gateway will be the inter internet interface. I'm not going to turn on the traffic shaping at the moment. So the POP has a light AP, the edge switch and the edge router, so we can see exactly how our point of presence is shaping up, which is great. We do have a subscriber, so we'll need to add the Lightbeam 5AC to the subscriber. I got lucky there. So let's add the UISP key to our Lightbeam. Just wait for that device to connect to UISP. So we do have a subscriber that we've already added. And there's some basic information for our subscriber as well, which should show up in a few seconds. You can manage the subscriber as well. And we can add a device to the subscriber. Under circumstances, what I'd like to do is use the light beam and assign it to our subscriber. So Mr. Subscriber. Okay, so we have a full link going all the way from uh, the bottom of the network all the way to the top. So what I'd like to do at this stage 
Let's just show you a few of the things you can do just to verify things are working correctly. So in the manage section, I can even open up a terminal and log into the device. I've got to be careful pressing tab and enter. You have to apologize for that. There we go. So now I can just ping our new subnet. To verify that's working. And with any luck, because I've created that subnet and the edge switch is trunking that subnet, the light AP should be passing that information to the light beam. So I can go into the terminal for the light beam as well and just verify it's there. have end-to-end -end connectivity to our new VLAN subnet, which is the CP uh, LAN, so this is our subscribers network. So that all seems to work very well, and for the most part, that was configured all via the UISP. Okay, so let's review the topology in the map. We have a subscriber, and we have a, a, a site, but let's go to the UISP Design Center and see what that looks like within the UISP Design Center. So we're now at ispdesign.ui.com. This is a simulated design, which we covered last um, uh, a couple of episodes ago. And if we allow it to view our location, it's imported our link and hopefully our devices as well. So we can see exactly what our topology looks like in the design center. And we can even add devices in here to the simulation to scale the network uh, or distribution network as required. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the settings for the system. We have a firmware manager. This allows us to see the firmware for our devices, um, as well as other firmware for all the devices, so we can upload those uh, in readiness for um, adding new devices as required. You can create users for UISP as well. So if you have other users that need to connect to your UISP platform, uh, you can do. You can also have monitor-only ones so they can monitor it. This could be, for example, the notifications uh, users, um, on-site engineers and things like that. So they can get to sites quickly and fix things. And finally, since we have a working uh, UISP uh, solution now, uh, we're going to take a backup and then we can download backups and restore them from file as well. I'll have a quick look at the devices section. This is where you can get your um, USP key so you can adopt devices. And you can also migrate between USP servers as well. So for example, if you have a local instance and you want to migrate to the cloud, you can use this migration mode to do so. Okay, so let's do a... Um, a uh, quick recap. Um, we've covered the USP WISP infrastructure. Uh, we've covered the, the installation types, for example, local uh, USP appliance and cloud. And we've covered some device management statistics at making changes to settings. And we've also had a very quick explore of the relationship management system. So I think that's everything. I'm going to pass you over to Rachel to uh, finish things off. And I'll speak to you very shortly in the Q&A. Thanks very much. Thank you, Russell. That was great. Um, I hope everyone found that useful. There is quite a lot of features within that application. So, um, and we've had a few questions. So we will go through that uh, in a bit more detail. Um, I want to go through the support as well, because if you are using that application um, and you would like our support with it, we have um, just launched our UISP application dedicated training. Um, so this is focused all about what we're talking about today on this episode, and it gives you one-on-one sort of -on -one mentoring and live troubleshooting with your site um, when you're using it and um, configuration assistance as well. So if you have a project um, that would benefit from our help, um, then you can book this by calling us or simply clicking uh, at the top of the slide there um, and we can get that booked in. 
We also um, offer our premium support starter pack, which I know I've covered before, and that covers sort of an hour of dedicated email telephone support, which covers all of our brands, so not just Ubiquity. Um, so it's from our tech support team. So if you need any help with any of your projects, uh, anything you've got going on, then please do reach out. Um, and lastly, um, our popular uh, Ubiquity Enterprise Wireless Admin Training course. So as I previously mentioned, Russell is our dedicated trainer for the UEWA course. And, and by attending the course in person, you not only gain the certification, but also get hands-on learning experience and knowledge of Ubiquity's Unify hardware and software. And of course, um, I actually spoke to some people in the course that we had last week and we had attendees from, traveled from France, Jersey, Ireland. So we, we know how valuable it is. You, you know, a lot of people are willing to travel quite far um, to get that certification. And once you're on um, our list as well, if anyone asking for installers that um, have been certified, you know, we're, you know, we look at that list um, and suggest whoever's on it depending on the location um you can book that via our website or obviously if you want to discuss that in in more depth please do reach out give us a call uh, and we'll go through that in a bit more detail um just before we head over to uh the q a just a reminder the next episode um on our ubiquity master series is on wednesday the 5th of september same time 10 o'clock um and the fifth episode, Discover Unify OS Best Practices. This covers uh, setting up Unify OS for seamless integration, provides you with a step-by-step -step guide to successful wireless deployment, uh, will help you with defining coverage um, by providing optimization uh, techniques for your network. And lastly, we'll give you some pro tips for enhancing Unify infrastructure performance. Um, so if you haven't done so already, you can book your place uh, via the link at the top of the screen there. Um, I would also suggest signing up to our newsletter as well. Uh, you can do that on our website. If you do enjoy these webinars and are interested in Ubiquity, it will give you access to the latest in Ubiquity updates and releases uh, and we'll tell you about uh, any future webinars that we've got so you can secure your seats on there. Uh, and most importantly, we'll tell you about limited time offers and promotions that we've got going on, training dates, support packages, um, just things really that you, you should know about. So we'll send uh, through an email at the end, um, by the end of play today, with links to all, as I say, all the recordings um, of previous episodes, but also links to um, you know, the newsletter um, and the courses that you can sign up to. Um, so I'll hand you over now to Jake, um, who will go through all of the questions um, with Jake and Russell. And um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Rachel. Um, so I'm Jake. I'm the commercial support manager at Falcon. Uh, I've been working with Unify since 2014. So hopefully we can help you answer some questions today um, between myself and Russell. Um, so we'll just before we dive into those, um, I did want to get um, a quick bit of feedback. So um, Russell touched on the CRM uh, and how much it can cover and how many features are within that. Um, we don't think we'd have enough time today to include that in a demo. Um, but if it's something that interests you guys, uh, you'd like to dive into that a bit more, see a bit of what it contains and how it can help you manage your network uh, and your clients. Uh, we would happy to do uh, potentially another webinar or maybe some YouTube videos on that. So if you let us know uh, if you're interested, uh, and we'll, we'll look at hosting another one of those. I'll give you a minute to answer that. Oh, yes, it's just edging out. Okay. <laughs> Moises and nose. Looks good. Perfect. Okay, we'll dive into the questions now then. So uh, the first question we've got is from Bob. Um, he's asked if uh, UNMS is different to Unify Management. Um, so just to, to cut in, Russ, um, obviously the UNMS, uh, UNMS was renamed in January 2021 by Ubiquiti to the UISP, which is what this is now. Um, it used to be the, the way to centrally manage your uh, HVAC stuff. Uh, that's now UISP. Um, and hopefully you've seen during this demo some of the similarities uh, between the two. Obviously the exclusion of the keys that you can enter on the 
uh, direct interfaces for your other devices, but generally quite similar in how you add them to one one controller and they try to keep the layout very similar as well. So um, not the same, but similar. If I remember correctly, um, UCRM was uh, a separate interface as well, and they integrated it into UISP when, uh, at some point, when they changed the, it from UNMS to UISP, they integrated UCRM to it as well. Perfect. Um, so, another question from Andrew. So, uh, with uh, a P, uh, with a PTP or PTMP network uh, all registered under UISP, how do you enable notifications for lost connection between an AP and stations or uh, a lost connection for an AP? I have the UISP app on an iPhone, but I can't work out how to get these notifications uh, for lost connections from my sites. So I imagine that would be under the, uh, the push notification settings. Um, you need to adjust those and make sure they're kind of tied to your account correctly. Um, to be honest, we've never had that problem, so it may be something we need to ask a bit to you about. Um, but the push notifications should be where you can set up push notification requirements, uh, including lost connections. Perfect. Um, so, on from Jim, uh, what management interface could be used uh, for a closed slash standalone network? I, you know, I assume uh, a network with no internet connection currently. Uh, maybe you're in the process of setting that up. Uh, yeah, so you can still use uh, UISP, just use uh, the the console, the installation console version of it. Like I said, we, we tried it on VirtualBox, uh, got uh, Debian 12 installed, and then just installed the UISP on there. Um, the interface is almost identical to the cloud version, and it'll just be an IP address on your network. Um, as If you're setting up static IP addresses on your network, then and you don't have a DHCP server, then you can set up your devices that way. Um, and you don't need an internet connection for that. The USP key will still reach the the the, um, the, the console as long as obviously there's layer three um, end to end connectivity. Cool. So I suppose a question I have off the back of that um, on Andrew's behalf is, oh sorry, Jim's behalf uh, is, if you were to uh, if you're just be setting up a, a network and you were using direct interfaces and you add your key to it, will that key stay until it gets an active connection, um, and then it will keep probing? Uh, and then eventually appear in your ISP console? Uh, not entirely sure I understand the question. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the USP key is literally just a an IP address. It's like the adoption uh, inform URL within Unify. Um, so, you know, if you put the key into your Edge Max device, and as long as your console is there, it'll, it'll try to find it, and it should just keep on trying to find it until it can find the cons console. So on from Andrew, uh, can you connect Unify devices to your ISP as well as having these in the Unify controller set up? Uh, I do not believe Unify is uh, UISP. So UISP is uh, completely separate to Unify, although I'd like to see the integration there. Uh, maybe there is, maybe it's something coming up, um, but I haven't had any, um, I haven't got any feedback as to whether Unify devices are actually supported by USP, and I'm fairly sure they are not. One from Jordan. Uh, when using the UISP uh, to migrate, uh, are you able to move from one permanent server to another, or just move them via the cloud? Uh, um, do you mean like a uh, an on-premise? Oh, it might be yeah, on-prem server. Uh, I'm fairly sure you can, yes, um, because it would be a migration. You just have to have another. Um, on-premises server running. So when you do the migration, it migrates it uh, seamlessly. Uh, so one final question uh, we've got is, I've done my UEWA certification with Russell last year. Uh, will you be doing any other courses uh, and certifications for any of the other um, certs for Ubiquiti, such as UBWS, UBWA, UBRS, S and UBRSA. Um, on that one, we are looking to reintroduce the UBWA, something we've we've done previously, but not since before COVID. Uh, we are looking to ramp that one back up. Currently, are no plans on UBRSS or UBRSA at this time, unfortunately. Uh, have we got any last minute questions we're going to cover? We've got a little bit of, bit of time left. Anyone got an extra one they want to pop in? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, we've got one more. Uh, oh, when, joining a when joining a device, do you lose the config that was on that device um, for the existing kit? Uh, 
No, that's very, very critical. You may have noticed that when I did my um, my adoptions on the devices, I was still able to log in using the same credentials. Uh, the links didn't um, get lost on my Edge Max device when I connected. Uh, everything stays the same on the devices and actually imports the configuration information into UISP. So, um, you know, you can make changes to the existing configuration. Um, it The reason that it works this way for the most part is going to be due to the fact that if you've already uh, added your devices into your distribution network, um, adding to USP, if it resets them, it could potentially destroy the settings. So it's not like Unify where, for example, you adopt a, an Ubiquiti access point and then it configures it. It's the other way around. The uh, You adopt the Edge Max device and it will, um, it will send that configuration to the UISP so you can make changes to the existing configuration. Perfect. Okay. I think that's everything for today. Um, thanks everyone to, for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you all in episode five. Uh, this yeah. will be avail uh, available on YouTube later on. It'll come around as an email. So don't worry if you missed anything. Perfect. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.